Hi guys, so in this particular video, I'm, I'm going to talk about the role of FPGA in trading. So in the full form of FPGA is Field Programmable Gateway Array. And I'll basically talk about why FPGAs are required in trading, how they solve latency problems, what are the latency problems which come when trading firms run their order entry market data and trading strategy applications on the CPU. I mean, why they do not like to run on them on CPU and why they run them on FPGA, how FPGA helps them overcome the problems which are caused when you run your strategies and everything on the CPU. So I'm not going to deep dive into the FPGAs. I mean, uh, there are a lot of online resources which you can find around them. But and there is also one great blog written by Maven Securities regarding what is an FPGA. So basically FPGA, as I said, is a field programmable gate array. And it's a type of integrated circuit that contains an array of configurable logic blocks. Blocks. And as you can see in this particular diagram that FPGA, they also have their memory like uh, it's written here as well that modern FPGAs have different types of internal resources like memories and DSP cells that can be used to implement pretty much any data processing and control algorithms. And apart from trading, they are used in variety of other uh, domains as well. I think they are used in defense domain as well. In a lot of electrical applications, they are used. And any type of application basically which require high throughput or low latency uh, things, these FPGA are usually preferred against CPU. So yeah. Let's see why they are required first. I mean, what is the motivation behind using FPGA? Why trading firms use FPGA and not CPUs? So let's say uh, we are coming back to our previous discussions only. I mean, I'll recommend you to watch my previous two videos around HFT system design, which you'll find in the description section and also in the recommendation, recommendation section coming at the top right. So let's say this is a stock exchange server. There are four companies, company one, company two, company three, company four, denoted by the blocks on the left hand side, which are trading on this particular stock exchange. Let's say there is this person named CR7. So CR7 has like, let's say he's a millionaire and today he has decided to sell all of his Apple stocks. Okay, so he basically sends an order the order to the exchange that sell all my Apple stocks. Now when exchange receives this particular event, exchange will broadcast this to all the market participants. So exchange will send uh, market data packets to all the market participants. And in this case, there are four market par participants, company one, company two, company three, and company four. So let's draw the arrows for them. So when the exchange would send these market data packets to all of them. So as I have mentioned in my previous videos that exchange will maintain fairness. It will send the market data packets. I mean, it will basically broadcast these market data packets to all of these uh, participants. It will ensure that all of these participants receive the market data packet at the same time. I mean, at least exchange is going to ensure that it is sent to all of them at the same time. Now, depending on where these app participants are sitting, they might receive at different these packets at different times if they are sitting if someone is sitting far away from exchange and someone is sitting close to the exchange but let's say they are equidistant they are sitting in the exchange co-location facility in case you do not know about co-location i have explained them in my previous videos so the market data packet is sent so let me draw this block which highlights the market data packet and the information inside this market data packet is that cr7 has sold some x quantity of apple shares at some y price okay now when all of let's say all these companies receive this market data packet at the same time now it depends who is going to make the profit so whoever process the, processes the market data packet fast and like whoever's trading strategy uh, based on the information inside this market data packet decides that okay now we should send some order to the exchange and whoever order reaches to the exchange will make the profit so now it depends who is going to process the market data faster so it depends on the architecture which they are using so let's say there is some company uh, let's look at this particular diagram so as i mentioned that stock exchange server has sent the market data to it so when this let's denote this big box as the host on which the some company's uh, trading application is running okay so how would this information which is traveling on the wire this market data packet which is traveling on the wire will end up in the cpu or sorry in the memory how would the contents inside this particular packet would end up in the ram or the memory of this particular application or the cache of this particular uh, you know cpu on which the uh, you can say the company's applications are running because all the applications like market data or entry trading strategies are running on the cpu itself on the cpu right and all of them will be consuming data from the memory i mean whenever you are all the data which is consumed on which basically that particular application acts can only be consumed from 
a few places like either that data is present in the CPU register or in the cache. There are three, I mean, the, usually the cache is hierarchical, L1, L2, L3 cache, or if it is present in the RAM, right? Or if it is present in some secondary storage device, which has to be loaded again in the RAM. So before uh, the market data application or the trading strategy can process the data present in this market data packet, this data first needs to reach the memory, right? So if you have studied about computer architecture and computer networks, so a couple of people might know this as well. I mean, who are aware about these things, but in case you don't know, like what is going to happen that your network interface card, whichever ethernet interface, uh, this basically box can have multiple ethernet interface. So let's say some particular ethernet interface received this particular packet. Uh, now this particular, whichever network interface card is present on this box will basically process this will basically consume this packet from the wire and this NIC, uh, I mean the associated NIC adapter will try to send the data in this market data packet to the memory. Now that data needs to, now based on what uh, NIC you are using, I mean it also depends on different kind of network interface cards which you are using, the way all these processing would be done and the memory would, sorry the contents of this packet would reach memory. But irrespective of that, the contents of this market data packet are going to travel through this PCI Express bus. I mean, uh, this NIC you can assume is an input output device, right? So all the data needs to travel through some path to reach this memory. So usually there is this PCIe, which is called PCI Express bus is there through which the data travels and reaches the memory. Okay. In case you do not know about these things, I would highly recommend you to study about computer architecture. But you can assume that this PCI Express bus, I mean, in simple terms, you can assume that this PCI Express bus is like a path between your input output devices like keyboard, uh, your mouse, your monitor and your CPU and memory. Like this is the path through which data travels from your input output device to your CPU and memory and from your CPU and memory to your input output device. Okay. And if I explain you again in um, more simple terms, like what usually happens that uh, in the computer architecture, they are different devices like CPU, RAM, and the all these input output devices like keyboard, mouse, monitor, right? So all of these need to interact with each other, need to do data transfer. So there is usually this, you can assume a kind of wire, a PCI bus, it is called a PCI bus and all the devices are connected through this wire. So like uh, all of these will have this, these connections and uh, let me actually first draw these. So like this square block can be your CPU, this can be your network interface card, this can be your uh, keyboard, this can be your mouse, okay, let me also label them quickly. So this can be your CPU, this can be your NIC, and this can be your maybe keyboard. So again, this I'm explaining in very simple terms, I would recommend, highly recommend you to study your computer architecture book. Okay, so whenever any data is received on this snake or let's say you hit clicked some key on your keyboard so that data needs to go to the ram i mean it needs to reach the ram right let me also draw the ram here or any memory device so for that to happen actually that data needs to travel via some path right so one way is that maybe all these you can connect all these devices uh Basically, you can interconnect all these devices with uh, some pair of wires like keyboard can be con connected to CPU, RAM, NIC, right? Similarly, NIC can be con connected to CPU and RAM and all those things. But that would be like very cumbersome for CPU or, you know, computer designers. So what they instead decided to do is to place a common wire, which is called bus and connect all the devices on it. So whenever someone wants to enter some data, they place this data on this PCI Express bus and through some control lines, they enable I mean, through some control lines, some particular device is enabled that, okay, this data is for this particular device. And then there is a concept of addresses as well that this data needs to reach this particular address and all those things. So this is how the data transfer between IO device and your CPU and RAM ha happens. Okay. I'm, I mean, again, this I have explained in many simple terms, read your computer architecture books. So coming back to it. So when the data which has been reached on this NIC will travel through this PCI Express bus to reach the memory and the CPU where your application is running and where the operating system is also running. The latency would be very significant. I mean, the PCI Express bus adds a lot of latency. I mean, it, it, 
it adds a good amount of nanoseconds of latency i'm actually not exactly sure how much it adds but as per my knowledge it can be anything around like 64 nanoseconds to i don't know even 300 nanoseconds okay and uh, so this is very uh, i mean this latency is very huge because maybe some other competitor might process this data very fast if they are using fpga and they will immediately process it and will send the order and they will end up consuming the available liquidity in the market and make the profit so you are like you have lost the opportunity to make money so companies therefore do not uh, prefer to run their strategies and order entry applications on cpu because this uh, this pci express bus latency is very high and other thing is that this market data which is traveling on this wire actually uh, if you have studied about computer networks and if you know about the osi model so what happens is this let me quickly explain it to you that uh yeah so let me show you what happens like this you can say is your market data packet okay so it will have information like it it, it will have information like okay someone bought apple shares and the quantity was 10 let's say someone bought 10 apple shares for let's say price i don't know whatever price let's say 1000 usd and it will also have like side side is basically if someone bought, bought it or sold it like side would be buy okay so this is your market data packet which you can say if you compare it with the uh, seven layers of osi model so this is the application layer packet then it will be encapsulated by a transport layer packet and as i told you before that market data travels on udp so this will be encapsulated within a udp packet okay so this could be a udp packet then this udp packet will be encapsulated inside an ip packet okay so this would be your ip datagram and this ip datagram would be further encapsulated inside a ethernet frame which is a layer 2 uh, protocol so this would be an ethernet frame now this ethernet frame is traveling inside on that wire when that reach when that this particular ethernet packet reaches your this particular ethernet frame reaches your network interface card and travels through your pci bus to reach your mem to reach the memory but operating system would do is it would basically take this entire ethernet frame and it would process this packet like it would remove this ethernet header i mean it would basically remove this outer ethernet packet then it would remove this outer ip datagram packet then it would remove this udp datagram packet to basically uh take out the underlying application data which is this market data packet which contains information about which stock was bought the quantity price inside and then eventually this market data this application layer packet would be processed by your uh strategy or market data application okay now operating system has to do all this networking things and the network stack of the operating system is very slow so latency is added there as well so these are like the latency of pci express bus and the operating system network layer latency like these are usually solved these can be usually solved by the fpga and that's why fpgas are preferred in trading and fpga solve other latency problems as well and they are i mean there are other benefits of using fpg as well but i am going to focus on these two so let me denote like how the building block of an fpga looks like so the what would happen that in an fpga setup everything is same but instead of this nick usually it is replaced by the fpga card itself okay and like there is a not not a lot of difference the only thing we have done is that we have replaced the nick with the fpga card itself so when the market data packet is received by the fpga all the processing would happen inside this fpga only and the fpga would send quickly send the order to the stock exchange so the latency of this pci express bus and that operating system layer operating systems network layer laten latency is saved so let us see what an fpga packet looks like like what are the building blocks of an fpga so this i have actually this diagram i have actually taken from a video which was uploaded by optiver on youtube so this is this big block is the fpga and these are the things inside the fpga so as i said like you received the market data packet it is an ethernet frame so this mac interface would receive it it can you know uh, basically remove the ethernet headers and it would take the inner packet which is the ip data gram packet which would be received by the market data handler this market data handler would do processing like it would remove the uh, ip data gram and the UP, udp data gram and it would basically take out the 
application packet which contains information about those things that what was the share which was uh, basically what is the stock the quantity price and the side whether it was a buy or sell order and then this market data handler can do other processing maybe it is updating the state of the order book or maybe it has some filtering logic that okay we are only interested in these particular shares so i mean whatever filtering is done by this market data packet market data handler eventually if the packet which you have received the market data packet which you have received if it passes the market data handler if it passes the filtering criteria of it it would reach your trading strategy the trading strategy would quickly make the decision if it wants to buy a particular share or if it wants to sell a particular share based on that data okay maybe it saw that someone has entered a very huge order for apple shares like as i told you in my uh, earlier example that's cr7 had entered uh, since cr7 is a millionaire he has entered a very big order that he wants to sell his dump all of his apple shares today okay so based on that maybe they want to quickly buy all those shares and then do something with it so this trading strategy would decide that this trading strategy will tell the order formatter to uh, send the order to the exchange then again this order formatter uh, will basically prepare a market a packet order entry packet so as we had seen this market data packet so the order entry application also does the same it would prepare the application data that that okay this is the apple share which i want to buy and uh, for i want to buy this much quantity at this price and this is and the side that i want to buy it then it would be encapsulated inside a transport layer protocol packet and in and order entry is usually done on tcp so it would be encapsulated around in tcp then in ip and then in ethernet which is eventually going to travel on the wire so this tcp uh component is for that i mean it will do since we are bypassing the operating system kernel operating system network stack so we have to handle all those networking stack networking things ourselves so that's why this tcp is there that it will do all the state management since you might be aware as i had also told you in my earlier videos that order entry is done on the tcp protocol so this tcp component will actually take care of the nitty gritties of tcp protocol like you know ensuring the reliability if any data which it has sent is not acknowledged then it would take care of retransmitting that data again and all the sequence number things acknowledgement number things retransmission recovery and all those things i mean it would basically provide you reliable information and since it has to do all of that its comp its logic would be a bit complex because it has to maintain the entire tcp state machine right so if let's say it sent some data and it was not acknowledged by that by the exchange so it needs to send that data again so for that it will also need some buffering because it has to store some packet to make sure that if it is not acknowledged so it can retransmit it again and this mac interface is via which via which interface it would be transmitted usually the market data and order entry mac interface are different so that you know we get more throughput and there is no conflict between them okay so uh the the usual tick to trade latency is measured like this that what is the time at which you receive this market data packet and the time at which you fired this order entry packet so the difference between these two the incoming and outgoing packet is usually termed as tick to trade latency and every most of the firms measure that and they try to get this tick to trade latency within a few nanoseconds i mean optiver claims that they have been able to achieve 10 nanoseconds of latency i mean the time at which the market data the first bit of the market data packet hit this network pin the ingress pin and the time at which the first bit of the order entry packet hit this egress pin okay the duration between this is only 10 nanosecond that is claimed by optiver and i think it is like very very low i mean they are like it it is like trading at light speed because 10 nanoseconds is like you are running an ultra low latency trading strategy i mean your entire system must be highly optimized to achieve such a latency i mean i mean 10 nanoseconds is really crazy and frightening as well because they are actually then killing all of the other trading firms in the market and usually like market makers are like uh, i mean they are basically very huge players in the market and due to the infrastructure they have the you know the kind of capital they invest in the market the kind of liquidity they bring in the market uh, they are able to make very huge profits and since they are making huge profits so someone is actually losing those opportunities to make money so that's why like market makers are i mean market makers for me are like very very crazy so yeah i think that was all i had for this particular video and i hope that i was able to explain why fpgas are preferred instead of cpu i would highly recommend you to read your computer architecture books understand about the architecture of the system how the io devices how the cpu and ram and everything uh, interacts with each other why you know where are the latencies which can be caused where are the points where latency can be incurred 
and again to solve all those latency problems only fpgas are preferred and that's why like i have also mentioned in my previous videos that the knowledge of computer architecture computer networks and again coding is very very important in the field of high frequency trading apart from that as i have also given analogy against the f1 racing i mean the analogy between f1 racing and hft so you can imagine it that i mean even in an f1 racing your hardware like the car which you are using should be highly optimized i mean lewis if you know about f1 racing like lewis hamilton has won a lot of competitions and he would i mean lewis hamilton wouldn't have been lewis hamilton if he had if he did not have the best car which mercedes had provided him if he did not have the best engineering team who built that car according to his convenience if he did not have the best team who you know supported him during pit stops so that's why you need i mean the infrastructure is very important even the best trader can't do anything if the infrastructure is not good because other firms will if they are faster than you then they will end up consuming the liquidity in the market so thank you guys for watching please don't forget to like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all next time